And let me start uh, by thanking uh, UniWider for uh, this great opportunity to come back to Helsinki and to make this presentation. It's usually a pleasure, really, to meet with my uh, colleagues at WIDA. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, my colleague uh, Guran Gadas from uh, Hanyang University. It's a paper that uh, is dealing with a technology catch-up in developing country, but this presentation will focus on uh, Africa. So uh, I will repeat what um, has been said this morning, that we have some hope in Africa because Africa succeeded to make some progress during the last decade uh, with a growth rate more than 5% uh, since 2007. And many countries in Africa uh, succeeded to uh, increase their well-being. And this is a, good, uh, a, a big success for Africa. Uh, is it time to, uh, for celebration? Uh, as the African development said, it's not really yet time for celebration because we have some contrast. We have still some problem in, in Africa. Because even if opportunity are really great in Africa, there is a lot of opportunity for progress, for catching up, for uh, technology progress. But still there is some problem like uh, lack of uh, good infrastructure, it out of uh, lack of uh, uh, production based diversification. In addition to that, uh, poverty is still high in Africa, and employment is also still high. And thus, we have some contrast in Africa. Of course, we cannot really generalize. Uh, some, uh, we have some uh, uh, successful story in Africa that I will talk about. But uh, we should really recognize the fact that even if the catching proce uh, process already started, uh, the gap between the emerging economies or the engine of growth in uh, South African country uh, is, is widening, and uh, we need to ask about uh, why uh, it is so. So we, we ask two main questions, but it's a provo provocative uh, question, uh, question, and it's not really maybe the right question that we want to ask, but we will ask it if why Africa is still lagging behind in terms of technological progress. And we will try to find a way to uh, answer this question by uh, uh, finding what kind of factors can help Africa to catch up. This is uh, give you a, a kind of idea about what is going on in Africa. You can see that some African countries succeeded to catch up. They are moving ahead, like Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and so on. But about 70% of African countries are still lagging behind. This is that means that some African uh, countries succeeded to catch up. How sustainable is this uh, catching up uh, process? Is this a question that we need to to, to answer? So. This is what, what, what we try to, to, to find, why, uh, why we have some uh, a reason to, 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 to be optimistic, but we need to, uh, to find a way to answer the question about the countries who are, uh, which are uh, lagging behind in terms of technological progress. So this is some uh, results in terms of labor productivity. This is a comparison between emerging economy. and emerging economy includes South Korea, India, China, uh, Singapore, Thailand, and we see that the, the, the gap in terms of labor productivity between emerging economy and our uh, sub-Saharan Africa is increasing over time. It's not just about labor productivity, even about total factor productivity, we can see that the gap is increasing. So even if we had uh, uh, Africa made a, a, a lot of progress in terms of growth, it, it seems that total factor productivity is increasing not enough uh, to sustain growth at the long run, and this is what we uh, try to uh, focus on. We have some results from the literature, and as you can see, that in terms of productivity, uh, even when we compare Africa to the uh, global level, we see that Africa is uh, far behind the global level in terms of productivity. There is some progress made over time, since 2000, and if we compare, for example, the period uh, 89, 95 to 2004, we see that now uh, total factor productivity is uh, contributing to growth. It was contributing negatively in uh, the 19th. Now it's positively, but uh, not enough. That means there is a lot, uh, there is a, a, some progress in Africa, but uh, uh, maybe uh, we need more effort to uh, promote uh, productivity growth in Africa. <coughs> So uh, when we refer to the literature, we have different way to explain uh, why uh, a country of a, or a group of countries can uh, succeed to catch up. 
uh, we, we have an approach focusing on capital accumulation. That means increasing investment can help country to catch up and so to uh, uh, progress in terms of technology. And we have the new approaches focusing on uh, institution condition, knowledge, human development, social capital infrastructure, what next. So we will focus on the last uh, approach. We don't really have data on social capital, so we will focus on knowledge, human development, and institution uh, conditions as a way uh, to catch up, and we will see if uh, this condition really played a role in the catching process in, uh, in, in the uh, East Asia. So let me uh, ask the, the data, and we see what we get from the data. So we, if we uh, uh, see uh, in, in this chart, we can see that there is a, a strong and positive correlation between total factor productivity and uh, GDP uh, per capita growth which means that at the long run, the, the only way for Africa to grow is to improve uh, uh, total factor productivity. In the same time, uh, we have a positive uh, correlation between GDP per capita and knowledge index. That means investing in knowledge or improving knowledge, it's a way for Africa to catch up and to improve its uh, productivity. This is uh, at the global level, but of course, we, the causality can run uh, in both ways. That means uh, improving uh, GDP or development can help really to improve knowledge in the country, but uh, we will control for that in our uh, empirical analysis. So, uh, how the situation looks like in Africa, we can see that this is some uh, data from UNESCO, Institute of Statistics, about uh, regional total uh, investment or expenditure in research and development of the world. And as you can see that uh, Africa is not really investing enough in research and development, only 7%, uh, 7 billion uh, pushing power by it is invested in, in knowledge compared to the 787.7 at the world. And over time there is an increase, but it's not really uh, that much. You can see that in 2001 it was 7 uh, billion it is now about uh, 11 billion. So there is an increase in uh, investment in terms of uh, research and development, but uh, is not really compared to, uh, comparable to the uh, global level. So even if we compare Africa to the rest of the world, that means the different region of the world, you can see that uh, still there is a, a, a gap between the effort made at the global level and the effort made in Africa in terms of research and development while it is essential for Africa to catch up. In terms of business environment, still, uh, the business environment compared to the rest of the world is not really uh, conductive for uh, innovation and for uh, invention. As you can see, uh, the ranking of Africa is still uh, behind the rest of, of the world, so much more effort in terms of business environment is, 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 is needed if Africa is to be uh, to catch up with the, the rest of the world. It's already mentioned this morning uh, that the business environment should be really improved uh, to, to promote private sector and to, to um, promote innovation in Africa. In terms of human capital, we still have the same problems. That means when we compare Sub-Saharan Africa to the rest of the world, we should see that there is still uh, a lag. And we can see that uh, for the different pillars of human capital, uh, Africa is still lagging behind. behind. <clears throat> so this is the main facts that we will try to f focus on to try to answer the question how we can uh, accelerate the catching process, uh, catching up process in, in Africa. <clears throat> so the same we have about knowledge, and we have the same results. Don't, there is nothing new about the fact that uh, even uh, about knowledge we have uh, some lag to, to fill. So this is the conceptual framework that we will add. We should try to, to measure the technology gap between African economies and uh, the uh, southern engine of growth, that means the emerging economies. This is the main fact that we will focus on to try to answer this question. So we will, uh, you, uh, we will include uh, a variable measuring uh, human capital level, uh, um, uh, a, a variable measuring uh, level of knowledge and um, a variable measuring ICT and after that uh, we will include in addition to all of that institutional uh, variable we will focus on business environment in Africa as a w uh, way to, uh, to, to improve uh, productivity. So this is what, what we try, of course we do not really ignore 
the external environment that is supposed uh, supposed to be a, a, a one way to uh, to uh, for technology transfer uh, in Africa. So this is the 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 the, the, the conceptual framework that we we base on uh, to to uh, to specify our uh, empirical uh, model. So uh, this is the, this is the model specification. So we try to explain the technology gap uh, between uh, African economy and the, the rest of the world. Uh, we we use the uh, meta frontier approach, meta frontier approach, and we measure the gap between the uh, frontier uh, in in Africa and the, the the best way of producing at the global level. We use some indicators, explanatory variables like <coughs> human capital, financial development. Uh, liberalization and so on. We have three groups of countries. We have the engine uh, of growth, southern engine for growth. We include Brazil, South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, as I said. We include also South Africa, which is an African country, but it's uh, somewhat an exception in the continent because South Africa is doing very well in terms of technology and in terms of uh, economic progress. As a benchmark, we have uh, the first group, we see the OCD countries, and the second one will be, uh, uh, and uh, we have the African country uh, that uh, we, we will uh, use as, uh, uh, that we will uh, focus on. Okay, this is what we get uh, in terms of analysis. So the, the, the meta frontier uh, helps us to uh, measure uh, two things, the technology efficiency and the, the technology gap. As a technical efficiency measure, that's the, 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 the gap between the effective level of production and the potential level of production of the frontier. The technology gap measures the gap between the uh, two frontiers, that means the best way of production and the best, uh, the or the current or the actual way of production. So as we can see in terms of efficiency, there is no really, uh, the, the, the gap is narrowing between the emerging economy and Africa, but when it comes to technology, uh, catch uh, gap, we see that uh, the gap is widening. Uh, we just uh, to, to remind you that the productivity is uh, um, <coughs> that's mean efficiency and technology gaps are the both component of productivity. So if you have an uh, improvement of total capital uh, of uh, total factor productivity, it can comes from wild technology efficiency or uh, technology change. So if we see uh, technology efficiency is improving in Africa, some of them, some progress in total factor productivity comes from the fact that uh, Africa is coming more efficient in using the current technology. But the problem is that when it comes to the new technology, it seems that the observation capacity of Africa in terms of new technology is still very limited. And uh, we want to, uh, to answer this question. <coughs> yes. This gap, uh, uh, one, it just means that we are coming close to the, to, the, to the best practices. So when it is declining, that's when we are going far from the frontier. So this technology, yeah, this is the ratio, the technology ratio. It's one, on the, one over technology gap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a panel data that they use. Panel data? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, metaphone data. Yeah. Okay, this is our regression. So we start by uh, uh, trying to explain what can be the main reasons for a, a group of country or country to cut shops. So we regress this technology gap ratio over a certain number of variables, infrastructure and quality, human development, business environment, trade and knowledge. We included other variables, but these are the, main, uh, the, the only uh, variables that are uh, 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 significant. So infrastructure quality is an index, which is, includes, for example, electricity, uh, consumption includes uh, roads, uh, telecommunication, and so on. So it's not really viable. It's an index. We use it, the uh, principal component to select uh, the, the variable to be included in this index. The same for, for human de development, we include uh, education, we include uh, health uh, expenditure, uh, we include the fertility rate and so on, so it's an index uh, that can uh, measuring the human development in a country. 
for the business environment is uh, is the same and uh, for knowledge is uh, um, uh, it's about uh, research and development investment about ICT exports and so on so we include all of them as a as a measure of knowledge so as we can see that all the the four factors are uh, contributing significantly and uh, positively and significantly to technology catch up and we can see that uh, this is the, the main driver of, uh, of catching our process in uh, cities of Darren Corm and in the world as a general. Now, when we try to, to, uh, to measure if the gap in terms of infrastructure, human development, all these four countries is a, a kind of constraints for Africa to catch up. So here, our benchmark is the emerging economy and we try to measure the gap in terms of infrastructure infrastructure, the gap in terms of human development and business environment, and we see if they are constant, and we, uh, we succeeded to uh, find a, uh, a negative and significant effect, which means that uh, the main factor behind uh, uh, the lag in terms of catching uh, up in Africa are the lack of good infrastructure, uh, the lack of uh, human development, and the business environment is not really enough conductive uh, for Africa to catch up. This is what, what we get as a result, uh, and uh, we didn't uh, succeed indeed to, uh, to have a significant result in terms of knowledge gap. Maybe the measure that we use it for knowledge is not really um, the right one, but we could not really uh, show that the knowledge gap is, uh, the, is a constraint for Africa to catch up. So, as a conclusion, uh, though it's more general conclusion, we can, say that we can say that there is a lot of opportunity in, in, in Africa and there is a lot of hope that African economy can catch up in, in the near future. But uh, for that uh, to happen, we need really to make some uh, structural transformation. And this is already emphasized this morning that the Africa need to make uh, structural transformation by strengthening the uh, investment climate. Uh, by uh, is, uh, improving uh, the grow, uh, governance and by uh, encouraging the private sector to contribute more to this transformation process. Of course, the uh, financial uh, side is also a, a constraint for the Africa. Uh, this morning, we, they talked about uh, the, uh, the effort by the African Development Bank to find an innovative way or innovative instrument to finance the transformation process but it may not really be enough for Africa uh, to, 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 to fuel this uh, transformation. So it seems that uh, I think that the, the, the only way is to uh, uh, design a kind of uh, domestic resource mobilization for Africa to, uh, to finance the uh, transformation uh, process. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you.